Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict and welcome back to explaining Pixinsight. inside. The last time we left off we had this image right here, the integration of the Horsehead Nebula. In this video we will continue the one-shot color processing and this video will be about the background modelization. This fancy word refers to the evenness of the background, removing some vignetting, maybe light pollution, gradients and getting the background to a neutral level. Maybe black, a bit grey, a bit light grey, something like that. So we can move on with deconvolution and color calibration. Let's jump into Pixinsight and start the modelization. You can see on the right hand side here there are again the many tools we will use in this entire series. And for this video we will need not these ones. And we already performed the integration. Now, screen transfer function and histogram transformation are basic steps you basically need all the time to preview something, to edit something, always. I always have them very close because they are often needed. The last time I made this video, about a year ago, I used a process called DSS Image Downloader. The problem is I can't use this properly this time because this image is way bigger, let's say. It's covering a field of view of more than 120 arc minutes. And the maximum you can download in the in DSS are 120 arc minutes. But I can still show you the process and I will link the old video, which you can't find anymore on YouTube. I will link the old video in the description. So you can get, if you're using longer focal lengths, let's say 714 like in the last time. I will link this video and you can take a look at the process and how to modelize your background most effectively. But I can still explain it right now, but not that effective, let's say. Alright, let's begin. We have the image right here, you can see it's very blue. Why is that? My guess it's because of the filter. It's a multi-narrowband filter and green doesn't come through there. So the lack of green makes this image very blue, because red and blue shine through the filter. The green channel is the weakest, so we could stretch the green channel to match the red and blue, or we could match the red and blue to the green, and that's the better idea, because stretching the green would cause so much green noise in the final image, which is awful. The tools on the right, you can see them. I have channel extraction, linear fit, channel combination. Those are optional, let's say, just to make this process a bit more clear, let's say. Basically, the only thing you need is the background, the dynamic background extraction. It works way better than the automatic extractor, which I will show you in just a second. Now, let, let's get rid of that blue cast. The channel extraction tool, all of these tools are, of course, in the process menu over here. It's right here, channel extraction. I will extract the RGB channels in, two, in three separate black and white images by pulling the blue triangle in this one. And here they are. Let's preview the green. And you can see the red one is of course the best one. Least noise, most signal, HA. The blue one is the worst when it comes to noise and signal. And green is somewhere in between. But the stretches are different. They are applied to each image. All right, let's unstretch those just for fun. And now, with the linear fit tool, I will choose the green image as the reference, green over here, and apply this fit to red and blue. So here's the red one, drag the triangle, it's going to take just a couple seconds, nothing more. Come on, there we go. You won't see much of a difference, but in the combination you will see it, and same to the blue. And when this is done, we can combine these channels again. Channel combination tool, RGB. I will load the, they are already selected. R, G, and B. Hit the circle or F6 to generate this image. And here it is, let's take a look. That looks much better. Now this color cast is away, at least the blue color cast. You can see a slight gradient in this image from left to right. It's much more bright on the right side. And I think that's because some light pollution 
the filter is multi bandpass so it can't it's not as effective as a true narrowband filter but it works pretty well this was shot in a bottle 8 zone and to get this much signal in bottle 8 zone in just one night this is not much data it's i think 3 hours it's great let's work with this one I will close these, I don't need them anymore. I will, I will of course keep this integration one here. And let's work with this one. Now, the next step, even more background modelization to get rid of this maybe light pollution of this gradient. The vignetting is pretty good, taken care of by the flat frames, but let's get this background even on the entire image. We have the tools, the automatic background extractor and the dynamic background extractor. When using these tools, either the automatic or the dynamic extractor, I'm not changing any settings because they are pretty good in my opinion. The only thing I change is the correction. I will change it to subtraction because light pollution gradients are linear. Let's take a look at the background model if it's doing its job good and apply this. It's not going to take very long. The background, let's take a look at what the tool extracted, subtracted. And you can see there is this gradient from left to right, but you can also see maybe vignetting here. I don't know, but let's take a look. Now this looks awful. I have seen many images of the Horsehead Nebula and many awesome ones of the horse head. And the thing I know is that nebulosity is everywhere in this image. So getting the background even is very hard. So the automatic background extractor always leaves a bright vign vignette. I don't know why. That's why I don't like it. The dynamic one is way better. Now, we can now place sample points in this image and we want to place them on neutral background sky, not any nebulosity. You can do this. You can, you can do that by either stretching the image to the max, and maybe place on the darkest areas. But I know that there's nebulosity everywhere in the horse set. I've t I've seen so many great images in HA. So how can we place these sample points in the best way? Let's try it for the first time. I will just. Even this one, the horse is dark. Just a very foolish attempt at trying this. And I know it's gonna suck. All right, subtraction, discard the model. Let's try. <coughs> now this looks pretty good. You can see the vignette from the automatic background extractor is gone and I can actually work with this image. This looks pretty great. But to give you an understanding of what the DSS image downloader is for, let's make let's do that first because this is actually a very interesting topic in my opinion. We're using scientific data from observatories to calibrate, not calibrate, to extract this background, which is insane in my opinion. That's it's integrated in Pixinsight. inside. All right, I will close this. We want to use sample points with neutral background sky or best possible neutral background sky in the case of the horse head. Now, how do we know if there's no nebulosity? Let's take a look. We can download in Pixinsight scientific data from professional observatories. I think it's the European Southern Observatory, it's downloading it from here. We will go into Script, Utilities and DSS Image Downloader. Now the maximum size you can download is 120 arc minutes. I will choose the horse set itself doesn't have a Messier or NGC number, but this small the small reflection nebula below it has it. The, uh, it's not a dark nebula. I, I I don't know how it's called. I know that the NGC number is 20, 23, I hope so. Let's click OK and you will see in the bottom right 
it's gonna download this file. And let's wait until that's done. And it's done. Now, scientific data is not pretty. It's helpful, but it's not pretty. So let's get this. Let's make this a bit prettier. I will use a dynamic crop to get rid of this of the edges because they are most of the time not very good. Yes, I will rotate this image and flip. That was not the right direction. And flip it in the orientation we are used to. And now, as I said, the histogram transformation is always useful. Let's do this and that. That was too much. Stretch, stretch, stretch. There is a slight horse head in there. Great. All right, here you can see scientific data from a professional observatory. You can see it's a mirror telescope. Only tech is gigantic and has beautiful spikes to it. Actually, look at the spike. It goes all the way down here, even. Jesus. And you can see it's not calibrated. There are many clip dark pixels, maybe subtracted all pixels, some dust even. I don't know what that is actually, it, it can't be dust. Some, maybe a dithering, something with dithering. All right. Now you can see most of the nebulosity because this image was shot in a very low light polluted area. Now, in the previous video where I had the bigger focal length, this image could cover my entire image. And the thing I did, I registered it to my image and used it as a mask. I can't do that right now because you see this image is smaller than my one over here. I could, of course, you make a lot of work out of it and get more panels of this one. You can download the entire sky, basically. I, can, I could get more panels, register them, make a mosaic, but... No, there's, there's a point, there's a stopping point for everything. But as I said, I will link the video where I did that in the description and you can take a look and get a better idea of what this is for, but... I can now see where nebulosity is and where there is not very much and most neutral background sky. So, for example, I think it stops at... Where is it? Nah, well, let's open the dynamic one again. And I know there is not much nebulosity here, it's this edge. There is not much in the bottom right, and the area I want to take a look at is this one in the bottom right. Because I know there is something down here, it's very weak. But close to this star there is supposed to be not very much. I will now place these simple points according to the image on the right hand side here and extract the background in the most effective way and extract the background in the most effective way I can. So let me just place these simple points. Of course again on the horse head, because it is very dark, it's a dark nebula. Let's try it again. I think, is there still a gradient? You can see there is a color gradient, let's say. Now you can, redu you can of course reduce those by cropping the image first, and that's actually a thing I should have done before. Using the dynamic crop tool you can see it in the top right to crop the edges a tiny bit to get rid of stacking artifacts. I can see a color cast on the top right it's more red and in the bottom left it's almost green yellow. But I will need to place more sample points there but you get the idea. And if you use longer focal lengths, the gradients will not be that apparent. It will be way, way easier to do this whole process. I will do this extraction right now. I will do it on my own because I will need a lot of time, I suppose. Let's take a look again. 
looks pretty good. I need to get rid of the color cast. I don't know yet how to do that. I will test it out. But I hope you got the basic idea of the background extraction, background modelization in Pixinside. And the DSS image downloader script is awesome to use. I can't use it because of this wide focal length of 450, but you can easily use it with 714 and use it as a mask. Again, I will link this video where I explain this process down below. This was the second video of explaining Pixinside. The next video will be... I suppose either it's either deconvolution or color calibration. I forgot, I forgot the, the order right now. I will look it up. I hope I was able to give you a basic understanding of the modelization. If you have any questions, you can of course leave them in the comments down below. And as for me, my name is Tim. I'm an astro addict. I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.